because he is a God who answers. He's a God who hears. When the church begins to pray, things will happen. Last year, pastor took us through 100 days of praying when prophets pray. He told us, he led us through, through weeks after weeks after weeks of intercession and praying and we brought people in from all over the world. And during that time, the Lord gave me a song, When Prophets Pray. And I just felt that that song was befitting for this season that we're in. Because when the church prays, when prophets pray, Elder Humphreys, God hears us. God answers. God moves on our behalf. Hallelujah. Come on, just take another moment. Lift your hands and just give God praise. Out of your own mouth, just begin to worship him. Tell him how wonderful he is, how great he is, how magnificent and how marvelous he is. And how much you appreciate the fact that he hears us when we pray. When prophets pray, God pays attention. He hears our plea. Each time we call, when prophets pray, he's sure to answer and show himself mighty and strong, for he said,
thank you for the moment in which you've called us to prayer. Now, God, as you have called us to give evidence in the earth, here we are. As we have started this journey seven days ago and have denied ourselves and modified our diets and caused our attention to you, thank you, Lord, for close to 100 intercessors at 7 a.m. yesterday. Thank you that the saints are praying and God is moving. Bless us now in this moment, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord from Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, one verse of scripture from the Amplified Version. It says, so Peter was kept in prison, but fervent prayer for him was persistently made to God by the church. I want to talk to you about when the church prays, there's evidence in the earth. Come on, say it with me, when the church prays, there's evidence in the earth. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to take a moment to thank you that have given online. Once again, you can go to Givelify. You want to hit the Home, Foreign, and Mission tab in doing so. We praise the Lord for you. When the church prays, there is evidence in the earth. While we were in noonday prayer this week, I sensed as we were ministering that I said to the saints in the prayer room that when the disciples got together, something, Tisa, happened in the earth. There is never a time, please listen to me, there is never a time as baptized believers that we should ever gather in vain. We have become a contemporary church that loves to gather to impress and to excite and to walk away feeling good about ourselves and the moment, but we've left nothing in the earth. We have forgotten that God has called us. He has called us to be change agents. Come on, preach with me quickly. Change agents, you are not here because there's nothing else to do. You're not here because this is a great show. It's a wonderful thing. And while all that may be wonderful, while all the singing and the preaching and all the things that attract you to excite you in the things of God, while that's great in the church, your purpose is for you to leave evidence in the earth that you've been here. Ah, leave evidence, leave evidence. Watchman Nee in his book, the book that we have recommended during this fast, the prayer ministry of the church, he reminds us that in a world that is desperately in need of him, God often seems limited in his operation and frustrated in his purpose. God seems limited and frustrated. Why? Because he's called us to do something that we've abandoned. We've turned prayer and used it now as a leverage, watch this, of desperation to run into prayer when we're in need instead of being in prayer to change situations. Oh, I'm coming after you today. Because if we pray because we heard bad news, when we pray because something got taken away from us, when we pray, Elder and Sister Hill, because our feelings are hurt or because something has gone wrong, we have learned how to run to God out of desperation because something did not work right in our life instead of being with God and knowing him. And it doesn't matter what works or doesn't work, we're in a space in God and there is evidence in the earth. Watchman Nee says that God is frustrated in his purpose despite the ever-present needs. There is no limitation in his ability. There is, however, a limitation, Watchman Nee says, in his willingness to work without the full cooperation of the church through prayer. God wants our full cooperation. God doesn't want you to check in. Hey, God, how you doing? I need this. I'm in need of that. Can you heal me? Can you loan me something? Can I hold something? 
Lord, I, I, I got bills. Can you work? Can you? Lord, I've got trouble. Can you, can, you, can you get me out? Notice, come on, think about it. I'm going to ask you, what does your prayer life consist of? Does your prayer life consist of more requests than it does praise? Do you have more on your laundry list, on your prayer list, that you're asking God to do for you, and you have not once said anything in the prayer about what you're going to do for him? Does your prayer, come on here, does it revolve around you? You're for and no more. And he says that God has placed you in the earth for full cooperation so that when you pray, he listens. Ah, oh, God, when you pray, hallelujah, he hears you. Hallelujah, because you've learned how to be in his presence. I got to move on. The prayer of the church lays the tracks upon which God moves to fulfill his eternal purpose. Watchman Nee says in, uh, uh, in his book, he says, when you pray, you're laying foundation. When you pray, you're busting up stuff. When you pray, you're confusing the enemy. When you pray, you're turning around circumstances and situations. When you pray, you're busting, come on here, into the gates of hell. Come on, somebody, say gates of hell. You, you need to get this because we really think that the gates of hell is pressing against the church. Gates don't move. And so technically, and I heard Bishop um, Vincent Matthews say this, we were together, he was talking about the fact that gates don't move, and then he says, we need to go to the gates and bust the gates open and go and take what's behind the gate. And watch this, the gates of hell shall not prevail against your prayer. Why? Because you have a revelation of who God is. When we pray, we pray out of revelation. That's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray, our Father who art in, come on here, heaven. Y'all sit down, we, ain't got, we got to go. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are sacred and this is secular. You are eternal and this is temporary. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Hey, when you pray, you bring in the authority of heaven, the government of heaven. That's why we can go to the DRC. That's why we can be in Pakistan. That's why we can be in Haiti. Because we don't go in our own strength. We go under the authority and the government of heaven. And when we go, we give his name. That at the name of Jesus, I dare you to nudge somebody and just say his name, Jesus. The Bible declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. We got to go. Mm. The text would tell us this. The text tells us this, that when Herod had killed James, whew, he said, he said, he said, uh, and he saw how it pleased the people around him. He went and arrested Peter and he would have killed Peter too, but those were the days of unleavened bread. Can I help somebody? Because one thing about prayer that we have to understand is that prayer must always be in the heart of the believer. Jesus says in Luke 18 and 1, and men ought to, come on, always pray. You need to pray when you're driving. Pray when you're working. Pray. Come on here. When you're cooking. Pray. When you're washing the dishes. Pray. When you're going to the laundromat. Pray. Pray. You ought to always be in prayer because you are constantly fighting satanic spirits, demons and devils that are trying to block your path. And instead of you being worried about it, he is giving you authority over it. But if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know how to move from intercession to supplication, if you don't know how to confront the enemy in a conversation, the old saints used to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. 
Come on, come on, come on. I need you to charge the atmosphere. We got to go, but charge the atmosphere. Say, Satan, the Lord rebuke him. The Lord rebuke him. The Lord rebuke him. The Lord rebuke the diagnosis. The Lord rebuke that emotional problem. The Lord rebuke the mental health. Come on, the word rebuke means the Lord disagrees. The, I disagree with the way you're handling my life. The Lord rebuke you out of my finance. The Lord rebuke you out of my health. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We got to go. Sit down, sit down, sit down. We got to go, but watch this. He says, I'm going to kill Peter. But can I help you with something? He says, I'm going to kill Peter after Passover. Jonathan, when I read the text, it is amazing how God works. Because the enemy will have plans for you. And then God will put them on pause. And between the time he says he's going to kill you. And between the time you die, there's some space that should be filled with prayer. That when you pray, come here Hezekiah. You got the word that God is going to take you out. He sent the prophet to tell you that your days are up. And the prophet goes skipping out the house. And before he can get to the gate, God says, turn around. Why? Because I heard him pray. Go back and tell him that the good news is that the bad news is wrong. From the time he said it to the time he left, God changed that thing. I'm going to ask the church today, what time is it? It's time to pray because Herod's trying to kill us. There are guards that are watching us, but the Bible says that the church went and prayed and they kept calling on the name of the Lord until they prayed an angel out of heaven. The angel comes and he wakes Peter. He says, get up, time to go. I know if you're with your family, do me a favor, if you're with your family, somebody you know, just go ahead and shake them at the shoulders and say, get up, it's time to go. God is moving, he heard your prayer. Get up, it's time to step out. Get up, it's time to run. Get up, it's time to know that God has answered your prayer. Peter said, you gotta be kidding me. He said, where am I going? The angel said, follow me. Cause when you pray, God sends help. God sends direction. God sends instruction. God sends deliverance. When you pray, We gotta go. Have a seat. I gotta finish this later. Gotta finish it later. But there ought to be some evidence. Can I testify? Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. Give an honor to the pastor, to all the elders and missionaries, to the people of God everywhere. As the pastor of this church, we got several calls, several texts this week about people who were diagnosed, folk that had been attacked in their body, but because we prayed in developing hope at five, and because we prayed in the sunrise prayer at seven, and because we came in this house and prayed in that prayer room at nine, I've got evidence that the same people that text, the same people that called, the same people that emailed, emailed me before today and said the Lord turned it around. There's evidence in the earth that God is up to something. Pray, pray for your child. Don't let the devil get him. Pray for your grown child that you shall be saved. If your child is in here, your grandchild, your husband or your wife, look at him and say, you shall be saved. You shall be. God's going to turn it around. God's going to work.
work in your behalf because I took time to pray. I took time to talk to God. And in between here and there, between then and now, God is doing a wonder. Pray until you see evidence. Watch this. She heard his voice, but she didn't open the door. I'm here to tell somebody that God's going to move quick. God's going to move instantaneously. You're going to be shocked at how God's going to do this thing. But when you pray, believe what you pray. Step into it and don't be afraid. Step into it. And don't be shocked. And when others say, how did that happen? The only thing you need to say is here's my receipt. I ask the Lord, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up. And if they committed any sin, they shall be forgiven. When the church pray, 